yun. Maraming salamat. Palakpakan naman natin ang Cleos Band. Natutuwa ko. I think it was last week when I asked Benji if the band can actually play for us tonight. Grabe na, ang galing. Para tayo nasa concert. Very good. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Medyo marami akong paraternalia dito sa inahan, sa harapan ko. Yan. Good, more, good evening po sa ating lahat. Thank you for joining us tonight here on Powerhouse Weekend. And even to those who are watching us tonight sa comfort of your homes or kung nagbabiyahe man kayo, thank you po for joining us tonight. It's been one whole month since the last time that we had our live broadcast of the Powerhouse Weekend. And tonight, maraming salamat po for joining us because again, we will be tackling a different topic tonight which hopefully we will be able to learn from. Hopefully po, marami tayong matutunan ngayong gabi. According to Bloomberg's uh, Billionaire Index, ito po yung pinakamayayamang tao sa buong mundo ngayon. Actually, I checked on this this afternoon to make sure na yung data na iyaharap ko sa inyo is actually correct. Okay, pakita ko natin ito because I have a question sa mga nanonood at sa ating mga nasa harap ngayon. Sino po sa inyo ang nakakakilala kahit three out of five man lang dito sa mga mukha na ito na nakikita nyo sa unahan? And then I will be giving you a free power mask. Grabe talaga si Domer. Kailangan tama yung pangalan nito ha. Sige Domer, can, can you somebody give, give him a microphone please? Hello, hello, hello. Sir, go. dito tayo. Tatlo lang po. Tatlo Tatlong lang. pangalan. Sino, yung, sino muna? Si Bill Gates. San si Bill Gates? Ayun po. Asan? Yan, ayan po. Ayan po, yung nasa taas po na matanda. Okay, yeah. upper Si right. Elon Musk po, si Elon Musk. Si Elon Musk, and then? Si Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Congratulations, ang galing. Palakpakan naman natin. Grabe si Domer, napaka-special talaga nitong batang ito. Napaka-husay. Okay, ito po yung limang pinakamayamang tao sa buong daigdig sa kasalukuyan. These are the five wealthiest, richest person on earth at the moment. So makikita nyo po dito yung kanilang mga pangalan. Click tayo para makita. Unang-una, on your upper left, dito po sa kung kayo'y nakatingin sa akin ngayon, on your upper left, you will see here Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Right? And then, doon po sa may center, uh, sa taas, this is Bernard Arnold of LVMH. Do you know what LVMH is? Louis Vuitton Monet Hennessy. So sila po yung conglomerate ng Louis Vuitton, ng mga bags and accessories and all of this. French po siya. Okay, and then you have on your upper right, okay, siya po si Bill Gates. Of course, kilala natin si Bill Gates of Microsoft. And then you have on your lower left, tama po ba? You have Elon Musk of Tesla. And then you have on your upper, uh, lower right, Oh, magkamali ako. This is Larry Page of Google. Siguro po tinatanong ninyo, nasan si Mark Zuckerberg? Kasi siya lang yata yung kilala ko. Mark Zuckerberg at this time, as we speak today, is the sixth richest. Okay, so hinanap ko nga, bakit wala dito si Mark Zuckerberg? And then yung number seven, ang, ang number six ay si Mark Zuckerberg. And then yung number seven ay si Sergey Brin of Google as well. Okay? So sila po yung pinakamayamang tao sa daigdig ngayon. But I have a question for another power mask. Sino dito sa kalilang lima ang pinakamayaman? Who is the richest of all these people that we just showed on screen? Is it Bernard Arnold, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, or Larry Page? Sino gustong sumagot? Anybody who wants to try? Bawal si Domer. Bawal si Domer. Who's the richest of these five? Ay, napaka-popular niya ngayon. Grabe. Okay, sir. Come here. Ayan, pakibigyan po ng microphone. Palakpakan naman natin. Lol. Sir, name natin? Nico. Si? Nico. Nico. Nico, pakita ka sa camera para makita nga guwapuhan mo dito. Mar Marinel, palakpak! Yan! Okay. Nico, who's the richest of these five? Si Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Palakpakan natin! Thank you very much, Nico. Pabigay na lang yung microphone doon. Next slide po. The richest man on earth right now is Elon Musk. And he is worth 
an astonishing $296 billion. Can somebody calculate 296 times 50? Calculate lang natin sa Philippine peso kung gano kayaman si Elon Musk at the moment. That's $296 billion. How many zeros are there? Nine? Sorry, patulungan niyo ako. Tama? 296 plus nine zeros. Mahina po ako sa mathematics. Tama. Magkano po ang computation natin? 296? 14 trillion pesos. Could you imagine yung wealth ng taong ito at the moment? It's 14 trillion pesos. In dollars, that's 296. It's not million, it's billion dollars. You know, this guy actually just came into prominence a couple of years ago, right? Hindi naman natin siya kilala nung mga a, a decade ago. Okay, and so on. But this guy's words at the moment is actually turning the stock market upside down. Yung kanyang tweet, pag nagtitweet si Elon Musk, nagkakagulo ang mga tao. Lalo na sa cryptocurrencies. If you are familiar with Bitcoin and all. Right? This guy has a lot of ideas. At napakalikot ng kanyang isip, ang isa sa kanyang mga gustong mangyari is ang mga tao ay magkaroon ng pagkakataon na makatira sa pulang planeta. Sa Mars. And at least through his SpaceX, he believed that by 2024, man can actually live on Mars already. Sino gustong sumama kay Elon dito? Alam niyo po ang description ng Mars, di ba? This is the hottest planet in the solar system. Papano tayo titira doon? But you know, Elon Musk is actually known for making the impossible possible. Yun yung utak niya eh. Magulo ang utak ng taong ito. But, because of his ideas, ito ang nangyari sa kanya ngayon. He became the wealthiest man on earth at the moment. Look at these five richest men on earth. Next po tayo. Their wealth started with an idea. And that idea turned into an ambition. That ambition made them the people that they are at the moment. You see, itong mga taong ito, sila po ay mga ambisyoso. Anong mga sa katabi mo? Ambisyoso ka ba? Ambisyosa ka ba? And there's nothing wrong about being ambitious, especially if you got a lot of ideas. And you will turn those ideas into ambition and you will become one of these. Perhaps, no, in five years or in ten years, may idea ka na pinagtatawa na ng mga tao ngayon. But come to think of it, perhaps in two, three, four years' time, you will realize you will be one on, on the list of the richest people on earth at the moment. My question is this, what is your childhood ambition? Ano yung childhood ambition ninyo nung mga bata pa po kayo? Ayan. Gusto kong tawagin yung ano, bago natin kasama na kumanta kanina from the Cleos Band. Bigyan natin ng microphone. Palakpakan naman natin, ma'am. Ayan. Ano pong pangalan natin, ma'am? Dito tayo para makita ang iyong kagandahan sa screen. Bigyan natin ng screen time. Ayan. Pakitutok ang camera. Ayan. Palakpakan naman natin, ma'am. Your name is? Roan po. Roan. Roan, you're working at the moment. No po, student uh, po. Student po oh, naman, studyante pa. Roan, what is your childhood ambition? Gusto ko po maging flight attendant. Mag Gusto mo maging flight attendant? Yes po. Are you a accomplishing it at the moment? Ano ang ating... Um, tourism po. Ano po? Tourism po yung course ko. Nursing ang course. Tourism po. Tourism ang course mo. So that's actually your way yes, of realizing your dreams. Bakit gusto mong maging flight attendant? Actually, kasi nakakatawa po yung reason. Kasi hindi po ako mahilig lumabas talaga. Hindi ka mahilig Hindi po lumabas. ako pinapalabas actually. Sa bahay. Opo. <laughs> Mami, daddy, nagsusumbong. Hindi <laughs> niyo siya pinapalabas ng bahay. Go ahead, ma'am. So, yun po yung reason ko. Kumbaga, isa na po yung traveling and isa na din po to communicate with other people kasi na-enjoy ko din po makipagkwentuhan kasi madaldal din po ako. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Ron. Palakpakan naman natin ang ating future flight attendant. Ron, dapat pala pinag-sample natin siya, no? Yung sinasabi ng mga flight attendant. Okay. You know, growing up, we realized that ambitions are not easily realized. Nung mga bata tayo, pag tinanong ka kung anong gusto mo, madali lang, tano madali lang sumagot. Right? But after a couple of years, after a decade or so, those dreams are very hard to realize pala. Right? Perhaps it's because of our financial circumstances. Kasi nung bata, kapag tinanong ka, wala ka naman pakialam kung may pera kayo o wala, eh, basta may ambition ka. Right? Pero, habang ikaw ay nag-aaral na, lalo na kapag halimbawa, naka-private ka, nilagay ka bigla sa may public ng parents mo, nare-realize mo na something is actually going on. Right? Pati yung dreams natin, pati yung mga ambitions natin, naaapektuhan din. Perhaps because of our financial constraints, our family situations, and because of those, we tend to let go of our dreams. Right? Sino sa inyo rito yung mga pangarap nyo nung kayo'y bata pa, natutupad nyo talaga ngayon? Meron ba? Parang along the way, biglang nagbago yung takbo ng buhay natin. Right? But, if nagagawa natin yon, well and good. It's very good. But sometimes, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, we let go of our dreams even without fighting for them first. Binibitawan na natin yung mga pangarap natin nang hindi pa natin ito sinusubukang ipaglaban. May mga pangarap tayo, right? We all have our ambitions, but sometimes we easily let go of those ambitions without even fighting for them first. And so we start living like a loser. Nagkakaroon tayo nung tinatawag nating defeatist perspective. Na kapag ikaw ay kausap ng tao, ang lagi nilang nakikita sa iyo, talunan ka kasi lahat ng sinasabi mo tungkol sa pagkatalo mo sa buhay. And we don't want to live like that. Right? Na kapag ikaw, kausap ka ng ibang tao at kapag nakikipag-usap ka sa ibang tao, all that's coming out of your mouth is all about defeat, defeat after defeat. Losing after losing. Parang wala nang patutunguhan yung buhay natin. And we know that it's not God's intention for us to live like a loser. Na mabuhay tayo na para tayong talunan because we all believe that God wants us to win in life. We all know that God wants us to win in life with our ambitions intact and our dreams held high. And so tonight, samahan niyo po ako as we journey on this topic, Ambitious Eyes on the Prize. Yan. Ngayong gabi po, tayo yung mga magiging ambisyoso at ambisyosa. Let's go. Alright? Masarap ang mag-ambisyon sa buhay. You know, before we begin, let me give you a brief context of the book of Philippians, particularly in chapter uh, 3, verses 12 to 14. You know, when the Apostle Paul was writing this book to the church of Philippi, he was not in pain nor was he in grief. It was not like that. The Apostle Paul was actually having a very good disposition in life because the church of Philippi is actually a, not a problematic church. Ang church po sa Philippi was actually one of those churches who have been supporting the Apostle Paul in his ministry. Kaya napakaganda ng perspective ni Apostle Paul while he was writing this book, the book of Philippians. Ito po yung sinulat niya ulit sa Church of Philippi. And yung perspective niya na yun, yung joy na meron siya, he would want the church to possess that same kind of joy that he has that joy that he has in accomplishing the task that God has given him to continue living and to continue winning in life. But how do we do it? Paano ba natin ito gagawin? The first thing that we have to do is this. We have to let go of everything that will keep you from winning in life. Ano ba yung mga bagay na pumipigil sa atin para manalo tayo sa buhay. Na para mawala sa atin yung defeatist perspective that all along, what we are thinking is that hanggang dito na lang tayo dahil ganito ang circumstances natin. Dahil ganito lang ang metro sa nose. No. 
Sabi nga natin, we let go of everything that will keep us from winning in life. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, let me read this for you. Not that I have already obtained all these or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, and this is a very familiar verse for all of us, right? Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Verse 14, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. And I believe that many of you are very familiar with this passage. This is a very short one, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. And as we go about our discussion tonight, let us ponder upon some of the truths that we need in order for us to keep going in life, to fulfill those dreams that we have, the ambitions, na posibleng hanggang ngayon kinikip mo sa sarili mo kasi pakiramdam natin, we can't do these things anymore. The first one, we let go of our fears. Remember that our fears won't allow us to succeed. Okay? It will only paralyze us into doing something more. Naranasan nyo na bang takot na takot kayo sa isang bagay na mangyari o sa isang bagay na hindi kayo makakilos ng isang buong araw at wala kayong na-accomplish na kahit na ano. Because you are afraid. You are scared and you cannot even do anything any task that you have for that entire day. What do you do when you are afraid? You're stuck in your bed for 24 hours. Right? Hindi ka mapakain ng magulang mo. You stay in your bed. And what do you do? Anong ginagawa mo? You internalize the fear itself. Right? You know, one of the lessons I've learned in life is not to internalize pain, hurt, and all of this. You know, these are feelings that we do have, and we respect those feelings. But katulad ng mga sinasabi ko sa inyo before, feelings can be very dangerous as well, particularly if it's not coming from God. Right? So when you are internalizing fear, when fear is not of God, then that is wrong you are internalizing something that is not coming from your God. So we have to let go of our fear. What are your fears that keep you from winning in life? You know, some of our fears are, are rooted in our insecurities sa buhay. Right? Sino sa, po sa inyo dito yung takot na takot humarap sa tao? Ako. Hindi kayo maniniwala, di ba? Hindi <laughs> alata. Pero po, pag meron kami bisita sa bahay, ginagawa ko, gusto ko nandun lang ako sa kwarto. Or hindi ako nakikita. Perhaps, I, I would be bringing in one of my lectures in, in, in my school, which is the, the uh, perception of the self as a social construction. Di ba? Tayo po ay produkto ng ating lipunan. And one of it is how we were created by our culture, particularly by our family culture. Okay? Yung ating pagiging mahiyain kasi, posibleng ito pa'y produkto ng ating paglaki. Let me give you an example. And this is an illustration I've been giving to my students whenever I teach this part. Sino sa inyo rito kapag meron kayong bisita sa bahay, sinasabihan kayo ng parents ninyo, anak, may bisita tayo mamaya. Alam mo na ha, special number. May song and dance number ka mamaya. Sino sa inyo rito ang gano'n ang ginagawa ng parents ninyo? Shelly, si Manel, si Benji. But that's true. Kapag ikaw ay sinanay ng nanay mo at ng tatay mo sa pamilya ninyo na lagi kang hinaharap sa tao, when you grow up, hindi sa'yo magiging mahirap ang humarap sa tao. But, Kapag sinabi ng parents mo, anak, may bisita tayo mamaya, doon ka lang sa kwarto mo. Ang bisita natin, 7 to 7 ng gabi. You stay in your room. 
How would that affect the perspective of the child kapag siya ay nasa harap ng maraming tao? Mahihirapan siya. Because he's not used to seeing a lot of people because growing up, ang sinasabi ng parents is what? Anak, pag may tao, dun ka lang. And sometimes it brings us a lot of insecurities. Growing up, especially when you go out of the world and you see and compare yourself to a lot of people, that's when your insecurities actually kick in the most. Kapag nakita mo na yung mga kaibigan mo may kanya-kanyang kotse, ikaw wala. Nagtatrabaho ka ng sampung taon, pero ang dami mo pa rin utang. Hindi ka makaalis sa utang. Kapag nakikita mo na yung bahay ninyo, ay kukumpara mo sa bahay ng mga kaibigan mo, that's when the insecurities come in. They will definitely kick in whether you agree with me or not. And that is very much affecting how you see and perceive yourself to be. Para ako nagle-lecture sa klase. Para ako nagle-lecture sa klase. But you know, these are some of our fears. And many of our fears are actually stemming from our insecurities in life. Not only our insecurities, but also they can stem from our past. And when I say past, I'm referring to what? Our mistakes. Mga pagkakamali natin sa buhay, which will lead me to the second one. We have to let go of our failures. Not only of our fears, but also of our failures. Katulad po ng binanggit ko kanina, when we concentrate on our fears, when we concentrate on our failures, yung utak natin, yung perspective natin, our mindset will always be defeated. Ang lagi natin iisipin, whenever we are supposed to do something, I can't. Hindi ko kaya. Hindi pa natin nasusubukan, pero ang iniisip agad natin, hindi natin kaya. Perhaps, because we have failed for most of our lives, lalo na kapag ang sinasabi sa atin ng pamilya natin, anong Tagalog ng failure? Sorry. Ayan, puno mga English ero ang mga tao dito. Pasensya na po. Diba? We are failures. Ano yan? May sumasagot. Ano po yan? Kabiguan. Diba? Punong-puno tayo ng kabiguan sa buhay. Marapi tayong mga failures in life. Right? Perhaps yung failures na ito, it was brought about by our own decisions. But these failures might be brought about by other people also. Nakasama natin along the way. But what we have to understand is that our failures, and we know this, and we've been hearing this, that our failures should not define who we are. That's why it's part of our past. We let go of our failures, and we have to understand that if we are living in failures, in our own failures in life, we will not be progressing in life. Hindi tayo uusad sa ating buhay. Because again, living in your failures, in the failures of your past, will only make you miserable. And we don't want to live a miserable life. Ayaw nating mabuhay na tayo ay miserable. Next one. Kala nyo, tapos na marami pa po ito. One and a half hour ang lecture ko sa school sa ubusin ko. <laughs> Joke lang. Number three, tingnan po natin. We have to let go of our familiar way of doing things. Tingnan ko na, ginawa ko letter F para madaling uh, maalala natin. Letting go of the familiar way of doing things, meaning sometimes what we have to do to succeed and to win in life is to get out of our comfort zone. And that is embracing the unknown. We always want to better ourselves. And sometimes, when we want to better ourselves, it is very important that we get out of where we feel comfortable the best. You've been hearing me talk about, I, I, I studied in Korea, but that was in 2008. You know, when I left for Korea, I do not know what the life 
that I, what kind of life I would have when I go there. Even yung nag-sponsor po sa akin, he was a very kind-hearted man. Ay hindi ko alam ang tunay na buhay niya. But what I know at that time was that it was already time for me to leave and study abroad. Because I've been praying for it even before I graduated from college, from Phoebias. Kaya nung time na yon, kahit na nakakatakot, but it was exciting. You are afraid, but at the same time, when you, when, when you try to change your perspective, because sometimes, you know, when you get out of the comfort zone, that is where you see the exciting part of life. That is when you realize that adventure is awaiting you. Right? Yung pinaka-importante sa atin eh. It is pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone that exciting things happen. Na hindi pwedeng hanggang dito na lang tayo. Kailangan, we dream. We believe. Ano sa nag? We survive. We win in life. Kaya nga ang pinag-aaral natin ngayong gabi is ambitious. Eyes on the prize. But how do we set our eyes on the prize? Next po tayo. How do we set our eyes on the prize? Again, balikan po natin sa Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all these or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know, winning in life and setting our eyes on the prize involves these two. The first one is this, a change of attitude. A change of attitude. You know, attitude is everything in life. Lalo na sa trabaho. Right? Kapag ikaw ay bago, binabantayan ka ng mga superiors mo. ba? How you act, kapag binibigyan ka ng mga directions, pag ikaw ay sinasabihan na ganito yung gawin mo, kung bigyan ka ng napakapangit na schedule, kung bibigyan ka ng trabaho na kailangan iuwi mo sa bahay mo. ba? Our superiors are actually looking at us because definitely, that could be part of their evaluation, whether you will be regularized at work or whether you will be promoted at work. Attitude is everything. And if we want to keep our eyes and set our eyes on the prize, we need to change our attitude. In particular, kapag ang attitude natin ay medyo hindi tama. Not only in what we do in the church, but at least in our context as young professionals, particularly whatever we do, in our workplace. Ano nga nakalagay sa Philippians 3.13b? Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. We have to let go of our fears, our failures. We have to live outside of our comfort zone and press on. What do we mean when we say straining toward what is ahead? What does that mean? Straining toward what is ahead is what? Straining is working hard, giving your 101%. Straining means putting all the effort necessary for you to succeed. If you are giving only 90% of what you can do at the moment, then it's not enough. You need the extra 10% for you to win. Plus one, so it's 101%. We need to change our attitude. We have to forget our failures. We have to let go of our fears. And work hard. Minsan, pag binibigyan tayo ng posisyon sa trabaho, di ba? Kaya ko ba to? But sometimes, you can't do anything but what? Just do it. Ginagawa natin, kahit minsan hindi natin alam ang ginagawa natin. Right? 
Sa trabaho, minsan bibigyan ka ng trabaho. So gawin mo to. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung paano ko gagawin to, pero sige, gagawin ko na. Until ma-master na natin yung trabaho natin. How long is it before you get used to your jobs? Halimbawa, pag, binigy, pag ikaw ay nag-apply sa trabaho, how long yung warm-up period mo? Ako sa work ko, sa school, it took me, I think, a year before I really felt like I'm already okay. Na parang I, feel, I already felt comfortable. Pero hindi siya mabilis. Lalo na kapag you have already experiences from your past workplace na medyo hindi maganda yung experience mo. Right? It's very difficult to be comfortable in your work. In your workplace. Kayo, gaano katagal bago kayo mag-warm up sa trabaho? Does it take you three months? Six months? Five years? <laughs> hindi ka pa rin komportable sa ginagawa mo? Parang ang hirap noon, di ba? But, what do we do? We have to strain toward what is ahead. Kailangan nating magtrabaho. We have to change our perspective on our jobs. Lalo na, kung ayaw mo ng trabaho mo pero wala ka namang magawa kasi yan lang ang trabaho, meron ka ngayon. Can I hear an amen? Let's face it, some of us perhaps do not like the jobs that we do have at the moment. Sino rito yung ayaw ninyo sa trabaho niyo? Don't worry, hindi kayo makikita sa screen. <laughs> but some of us are like that. May mga trabaho tayong ayaw natin, pero wala tayong magawa kasi yun ang trabaho natin. So how do we switch perspective? How do we flip the idea? Then, you have to understand that you need a job kailangan mong mabuhay at magpatuloy sa buhay dahil hindi pwedeng umasa ka sa magulang mo. Lalo na kung you are able naman para magtrabaho. We have to work. Kailangan nating magtrabaho. And when you realize that you cannot choose your job, especially pag nandiyan ka sa trabaho mo sa, mga, sa ngayon, that's actually a sign of you evolving, that's actually a sign of you maturing in life. Lalo na kapag sometimes, kapag medyo napapagalitan sa work. Hello? And, ano nangyayari? Hindi mo na masyadong dinididib. <laughs> right? Sabi ni Kimi ko, correct. Hindi mo na dinididib kapag napapagalitan ka sa trabaho. Sino rito ang napagsabihan na ng boss? nakatikim ng masasakit na salita sa trabaho. Sakit, di ba? Pero anong gagawin mo? Iiyak ka lang. Tapos anong gagawin mo? Magpe-freshen up ka ulit. Okay, go. Ganun ang buhay eh. When you see the reality of life, hindi pwedeng one week kang mawawala sa trabaho dahil mawawalan ka ng trabaho. Kailangan nating magpatuloy sa buhay and that's a sign of maturity. In life, and in the workplace. Let's look at this. These are signs of maturity. Only, first one, you're interested in discussing ideas rather than people. That's a sign of maturity. You don't talk about people anymore. You talk about ideas. You talk about how to make your life better. You talk about, okay, what are we going to do next? And you're excited about what is going to happen the next time. Right? Kapag ikaw ay busy sa buhay, you don't really have time to talk about people anymore, even in your workplace. Oh, si Errol, yes. Because masyado kang busy sa buhay. You want to discuss ideas. How to deliver in your workplace. And if you are gunning for a promotion, definitely you will be needing more and lots of ideas. Sorry po. Right? That's a sign of maturity. We don't talk about people. We talk about ideas. Because talking about ideas will make us grow 
and prosper. Nilagay na pala lahat. Number two, ano yung nakalagay dito? Uh, nasa na tayo? Eh, nawawala ako. Number two, you get excited talking about progress. Right? You get excited when people talk about ideas and these ideas will make you somehow progressive in life. You don't stay stagnant. You don't stay on a plateau. But we progress. We get excited talking about progress and achieving lifelong dreams. Lalo na siguro pag you, you already come to the age of 30 and above, Tama ba? Baka, may, baka biglang may sabihin ko, ops, nagkakaanuhan ng edad. But that's the reality, di ba? Listen to me. The way you think right now, say for example, you are 30 years old, come to think of it. Di ba ibang-iba nung nag-iisip ka nung 20 years old ka pa lang? Right? Even how you view love, even how you view family, it's very much different right now when you are 18 years old or when you are 12 years old. Ngayon, pag pinag-uusapan ng love, yes, may kilig, pero mayroong pagtingin sa realidad. Because that's different. We try to achieve our lifelong dreams. And another sign of maturity is you want to make your life, but not only your life, but you want to make your life and other people's lives better. And you hate dramas. Right? Lalo na pagpagod ka, di ba? Ayaw mo ng drama sa buhay. World peace. Di ba? Pag sa bahay, ang sinasabi, world peace. Yun ang moto ko sa buhay. World peace lang. Okay? Kasi sobrang gulo ng mundo. Dadagdag pa ba tayo sa gulo ng mundo? So kapayapaan para sa lahat. Let there be peace on earth and let it be... Mamala ko sa tono. Sorry, Shelly. Ha? <laughs> Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I'm sorry. Hindi daw nila alam. Sino nakakaalam? Bibigyan ko ng free power mask. Di ba yun yung kantang yung Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. World peace lang. Doon lang tayo. It does not only take a change of attitude, but it also takes, next one, a change of heart. Listen, the goal is not to be the best anymore among the rest. Kasi nung tayo'y nag-aaral, di ba, what I hate about the, cur the school system that we do have at the moment is that it's all about competition eh. Sino yung kasali sa top 10? Pag top 2 ka, kahit top 2 ka na, hindi ka pa rin masaya kasi hindi ikaw yung top 1. Right? It's all about competition. And I read something, please correct me if I'm wrong. In Japan, I think hindi sila nagpapa-exam yata until pagtapos ng grade 6 or grade 12 because they don't want na ang mga, mga tao, ang mga bata ay lumalaki having that competitive spirit with each other. Ang ini-inculcate nila muna sa mga bata ay values. Nung nabasa ko yan, sabi ko, oh, it's surprising but it's actually good. Right? It's not about tests. Sinong gusto nang walang test sa school? Gusto natin yun. <laughs> diba? Si Mr. Rizim, oh. si Rowan. ba? But it's actually good na ang mga bata while growing up, ang ini-inculcate natin sa kanila is hindi maka-perfect sa exam. Parents, listen. Okay? Hindi maka-perfect sa exam. But we have to inculcate values sa mga bata. And that is more important than getting a 100 sa exam. Kasi yung 100 na yun, makakalimutan nila yun. But the values that we inculcate in their minds, in their hearts, that's something that they will live by sa buhay nila. Dadalhin nila yun habang tumatanda sila. Di ba sa school, it's all about competition. Eh. Kung sinong pinakamagaling, kung sinong pinakamahusay. But a sign of maturity is that you don't compete with people anymore. Instead, we complement each other. I think I've said this before once in a para house weekend. You know, ang isa sa mga natutunan ko, lalo na nung nag-aral ako sa ibang bansa, I realized that 
ito yung naging perspective ko, there's always somebody who's better than me. Because that would not frustrate you along the way. And that would humble you. And you will realize that someone, somebody out there would be coming over. And they will be better than you. Are you supposed to feel frustrated? Because somebody's stealing thunder from you? No. In life, we have to compliment each other. We do that for one purpose anyway. That's a sign of maturity. And another sign of maturity is that when our goal is actually self-actualization. Ang sinakakaalala kay Maslow dito. Diba? Yung self-actualization yung pinakadulo, yung end goal ng tao. Right? But that's the truth. That's the truth. Even sa atin ng mga Kristiyano, our goal is actually self-actualization. But our concept of self-actualization falls under the idea of Christ-likeness. To be just like Jesus. And sometimes when we are so caught up with what we are doing in the ministry, we forget it because we are so busy. And we forget to be Christ-like. We are so focused on what we have to achieve. But we forget what we have to be. Listen, the change of heart, this can only come from God. Remember this, a change of attitude can only come from a change of heart. But, next slide, a change of heart can only come from God. A change of attitude can only come from a change of heart, but a change of heart can only and will only come from God. Sino sa inyo nakakaalam ng rap song before na naging popular na gusto kong bumait pero di ko magawa? Yung mga kumakanta na naman ako. Rap song yun ha? Sino nakakaalam ng song na yun? Hindi naman kausa, parang hindi niyo ako hindi kayo makarelate sa mga kinakanta ko dito. <laughs> Niya alam yan, yung gusto ko ang bumait pero di ko magawa. That's why actually sorry ah. Oh Lord. Okay, sige. Alam niyo yung song na gusto ko ang bumait pero di ko magawa. But you know that song is very true. There are a lot of people who would want to be good. But it's very difficult to be good. Because again, a change of, it takes a change of heart. And a change of heart can only come from God. And sometimes when we are in the church, sometimes we get frustrated because people are not changing, particularly sa mga D-groups natin minsan. Right? But the reality is, it is not our job to change a person's heart. It is not our job to change a person's heart. Our job is to sow seed of grace and mercy and of love coming from God. But it is God's job to change that person's heart. We are just vessels of it. Hindi tayo ang makapagbago ng tao. In handling cell groups before, you know, sometimes you get frustrated, di ba? Lalo na pag nagkakaproblema minsan yung mga kasama mo sa D-group, ano kailan siya kaya siya magbabago? Ulitin ko po, hindi natin kayang baguhin ang buhay ng isang tao hindi natin kayang baguhin ang puso ng isang tao because it's only God who can change the heart of an individual. We are just vessels to sow seeds of grace, of love, and mercy. That's our job. But how is God's job of changing our hearts at the moment? Kumusta po ang puso natin? In Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, ano nakalagay dito? Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. You know, I like this verse. Pag tinignan po niyo po yung verses 12 and 13, magka-compliment siya, parang inulit nga lang ni Apostle Paul dito yung sinasabi niya eh. Diba? Nakikita niyo po yung naka-yellow dito. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. And then, Doon po sa may verse 13 ang sabi, ano, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. 
It's the same idea. So as we are striving to achieve our goals, we have to understand that we haven't achieved everything yet. It's a process. And sometimes, and it could be frustrating for many of us, it could be a very slow process. of achieving those dreams, of realizing our ambitions. And human as we are, we get frustrated, right? You get frustrated when you see the world around you. You get frustrated when you see yourself in the mirror. We get frustrated with everything in life. But remember, even the Apostle Paul who said, I haven't achieved everything yet. I haven't achieved my goal yet. As we strive to achieve our goals, we should not be content on our relationship as well with God. With how our relationship looks like with God. We should aim for growth. We should aim for proximity with God. We should aim for a closer relationship with God Himself. Say, if what we do in life or in our church, in our ministries, will not result in Christ-likeness, then we are not achieving what God wanted us to be. Perhaps we are achieving what God wanted us to, to do, but we're not even coming closer to what God wanted us to be. Because what God, what, what God wants us to do and what God wants us to be are different, particularly if we have our own ministries in the church. This is what I specifically want you to do in my vineyard. But this is what I want you to be. And that's different. So as we do the work, we make sure that we become what God wants us to be. Perhaps we are doing what, we, what God wants us to do at the moment, but are we becoming what God wants us to be? You know, the end goal of Christianity is all about Christ-likeness, for us to be like Him. But if we're going to look at ourselves right now, on a scale of 1 to 10, we being in the church for the longest time that we have been, are we reaching what God wants us to be? Or we are only after what God wants us to do? Remember this, you cannot be what God wants you to be if there is no change of heart. And you will not able to do what God wants you to do if you will not become the person that God wants you to be first. We have to be the person that God wants us to be in order for us to do what God wants us to do. That's very important. Part of it sometimes, no? We try to fix the life of other people around us. You know, our prayer should be not for God to fix the life of other people. Our prayer should be for God to fix our own lives and to change our hearts because that is more important than us looking at other people. We look at ourselves first if we are actually vessels of God's grace, of His mercy, and of His peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. How do we press on? The first one is we forget what is behind. We forget what is behind we strain toward what is ahead and we keep our eyes on the goal. You know, our eyes are very important when you try to reach a goal, particularly if you are driving. Tama sa mga drivers dito, sa mga marunong mag-drive, importante na yung mata mo nakatutok doon sa way. Right? That is a very good way of looking at what the Apostle Paul is actually saying here. 
we keep our eyes on the goal. If you have a destination as a driver, you know that you have to fix your eyes on your destination. Kasi kapag nagkamali ka ng daanan, anong gagawin mo? Baka magkamali ka ng pupuntahan or baka kailangan mong maghanap ng bagong paraan para makapunta doon sa iyong pupuntahan. You know, we all dream of success. We all want to be successful and we know what success looks like and we know how success smells like. And success doesn't smell like you're just you've just taken out of the shower. Right? It's not like that. Success doesn't look like you getting out of the shower. Success smells like blood, sweat, and tears. That is what success looks like. And so as we fix our eyes on what we want to accomplish in life, in our work at the moment, you have to understand, you better work hard. You have to strive hard. You have to strain towards achieving your ambitions and your goals. Because success, again, doesn't smell like you have just taken out of the shower. It smells like blood, it's sweat, and it's tears. Pain, frustrations after frustrations. But you have to be determined. You have to be ambitious. You have to be decided and dedicated enough to win the prize that awaits you. Sino nga ulit ang pinakamayamang tao sa balat ng lupa at the moment? Si Elon Musk. But next slide. My question is this. Who is the most ambitious man who ever walked on earth? I don't think it's Elon Musk. The most ambitious man who ever walked on earth is Christ. You see, when he lived on earth, what did he do? He did the most ambitious act known to man. And that is saving us from our sins. That's why when he lived, everybody was laughing at him, right? Right? Pinagtatawanan siya ng mga tao. That was his goal. That was his ambition. And even though it was hard for him, that was, that's the reason why he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me. Kasi mahirap. Parang tayo sa trabaho, di ba? Father, if it is possible, please don't let my boss give me this work. But Jesus Christ said, But not my will, but yours. You know, Christ's ambition cost him his life. And that's the example that we do have. The pain, the suffering, the sorrow that he experienced is nothing compared to the pain, the suffering, and the sorrow that he experienced because he lived alone. Even while he was with his disciples, di ba napuprustrate pa nga siya sa kanyang mga disciples eh? Because they were not even praying. But Christ was the most ambitious man who ever walked on earth. And he experienced pain after pain, suffering after suffering, and all of this. But he has an ambition. And that was to fulfill the will of the Father. To save us from our sins. The question is, is it wrong for us to be ambitious? You know, this question is a question of the heart. If in your being ambitious, you would want to better yourself, or if you would want to help your family and the people around you, then you are selflessly ambitious and that is good. That is not even wrong. You ask your sitmate, ambitiosa ka? Ambitioso ka ba? Again, that is a question of the heart. 
if it's making your life better and making the life of other people better, then it's good to be ambitious. If you're being selflessly ambitious, then it is not wrong. Mas gugustuhin ko nang tawagin akong ambisyoso ko. Yes, I am ambitious. And we want to be ambitious. There is nothing wrong with being so driven in pursuing and accomplishing our goals. All it takes is to make sure that you got the right tools, a proper mindset, and this is the most important, a humble heart. A lot of people can be good. A lot of people can be great. But not a lot of, not a lot of people can be humble. Right? Sabi ko nga sa inyo nung makaraan, di ba? Kahit na gano'n ko kakahusay, if you do not have humility, hindi ko gustuhin ng mga tao na makatrabaho ka. Because all it takes is humility in life. And that speaks of excellently doing what needs to be done and straining hard, working hard. That is being ambitious. That is setting our eyes on the prize. Are you ambitious? I am very much ambitious. And we all have to be ambitious just as Christ was when He lived on earth. He is our example. Along the way, we will get frustrated because perhaps we are thinking it's a long process, but it's okay. We learn from every bit of the process that we get in life. Press on. Strive toward the goal. Be ambitious. Magandang gabi po. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Ambitious Eyes on the Prize. Alright. Palakpakan naman natin.